Hey, welcome back to my channel and the shop and the ongoing build of Mara's armoire. The drawers are done. Drawer fronts are in place. They all work. Everything is fine and dandy. See, I got no handles yet, so I got to do that. Let's turn it sideways a little. You can kind of get a better view of the raised panels and whatever. Uh, okay, enough of that. Back to work. It's now time to do the doors for the front of the, uh, of the armoire. The parts are rough cut out, so the, these pieces are all the rails and styles. And then I have two larger pieces that are going to be, more noise, the raised panels. So first things first is go get a drawing. I've got a drawing of these so I can get the dimensions correct. Um, this is all three quarter inch stock, but I like the drawers, I want the raised panels flush with the front. So there's going to be a rabbit on the back of the panels. They're going to fit inside the uh, dado, whatever, the groove that's going to be in the rails and styles to hold the panels. Now, uh, this is going to be a stub tenons. For this particular uh, job, stub tenons are fine. They're going to be plenty strong enough. We don't need to add any more than that. I don't have to do through tenons with this. But the dimensions have to be very precise because of the gaps that I want around the doors and the gap between the doors. So let's get started making some doors. What I did was I just cut these to exactly two inches. Um, I jointed one edge, one, one edge of it. There was a little bit of burning left over from when I roughed these out, so I obviously cut off the burning. So these have been now trimmed down to exactly two inches wide, which is what I want my rails and styles to be. The next step is to put the groove in them, and the process is going to be the flip around process. What I mean is I do a dado stack of one to three sixteenths of an inch wide. I measure precisely from the fence to this side of the dado stack to get the exact dimension I want, which is one quarter of an inch. Run it this way, like so, then turn it around and run it through again. That gives me the exact measurement I want, uh, which is a quarter inch by quarter inch by quarter inch groove through all the rails and styles to fit the, the, uh, the, the raised panels. Now, like I said, it's going to be stub tenons, so I can Clamp this all together once I've got it uh, cut out, make sure I've got the sizing correct for here, and then precisely measure to make sure the panels fit just how I want them. You want them a little bit loose to, because of weather, humidity, whatever, even though we're in air-conditioned spaces. So let me set up my data stack and we'll cut some grooves. Set up. Dado head is in place. It's got the height that I want. I actually went for a little more depth to give me some wiggle room for the uh, raised panel. Did a test piece on a piece of scrap cherry. Never really thought I'd use the word scrap cherry, but there it is. I, I decided to go a little more depth in the groove to give me some wiggle room, but the width is exactly what I want. So now I'm going to run all the pieces through and cut all the grooves for the rails and styles so I can put in the panels. Let's get busy. And there we go. So I'm going to inspect these to make sure, yeah, the cuts are all the way through and all the way through in the depth and everything. No highlights in them. Yeah, clean cuts is what you want. There 
And there we go. Uh, silly story. Um, quick, uh, before we move on. Uh, the very first project I did for someone who was paying me was probably about 25 years, 20 or 25 years ago. And I was doing a cabinet, and I needed to do uh, panel doors. Not raised panel, but panel doors. And I was doing this same thing, and I got a little distracted, and I made the first cut. Then I flipped the piece over this way and made the second cut. So I had a groove on both sides instead of just one side. Dumb. Well, of course, uh, I couldn't charge the customer for that. I went out and bought some more wood, ate the cost of that, and uh, since then I don't think I've ever made that mistake again. So for my next trick, um, we're going to start shaping, getting these cut to the right lengths and getting the, the joints together. Now, because I have this groove in here, it's going to mean cutting the stub tenons pretty easy because I could sneak up on it until I hit that line right there. And then I can test to make sure the sub tenons are correct. And then the parts are going to fit together correctly. Like that. So without further ado, haven't said that in a while, let's move on and uh, continue on building these wonderful doors. I made door mock-ups. Um, <clears throat> occasionally do this in a larger project because of the vagaries of wood. Sometimes measurements don't come out exact. Well, we won't go there. So the vagaries of wood. So I made a couple of mock-ups to the dimensions that I originally had measured. And I, 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 if you can see it from there, but I'll bring in the camera in closer. There's a gap. There's a quarter-inch gap here. So let's take a closer look at what's going on. You see here the, the quarter-inch gap I was talking about? Now, the first inclination would be, well, I'll just add a sixteenth of an inch to the width of the doors and that'll close it up to an eighth of an inch, which is more acceptable in a piece like this. But, we're using these wonderful solid brass hinges from Horton Brasses, uh, link in the description. And when these are in the closed position, mounted in the furniture piece, there's a 16 inch gap right there. So that closes these doors up to a 1 8 inch gap here, which is just what I'm looking for. So, first thing to do is to make the door, get the door frames cut to fit, put them all together, I can shave off a little bit from either edge or in the center if I have to. It'll never be noticed. I mean, that's how you do it. But we put the doors together, inlet these into the frame and the door, doors, and then I'll have the doors finished. I'll stop blocks back here and a magnetic lock and a uh, Mara wants a lock here, down here. You can't see it. My fingers are not down, but down there. She wants a lock. And there's also two door pulls, like drawer pulls, that are like that are going on here. Uh, that are going to be on the on the doors. Um, I've got the lock escutcheon. I've not picked out a lock yet. Step one: cut the rails to the length of the stub tenons. Then I can then I can cut away the cheeks of the stub tenons before they go into the styles. I've set up my uh, um, Craig Precision miter, miter gauge in on the table saw. Um, I've measured and made a test cut to make sure it's the right length, which is by my drawing 10 and 1 8. Uh, I actually, uh, because this has been manipulated around the shop a little bit during the rebuild, uh, I uh, had to re square it. It was off by like the 16th of an inch over here, but it's square now. So the next thing to do is just cut out all four of the rails. <laughs> Four rails. Um, I have a, uh, a waste piece from when I was doing the dados, and I can use this to set up the dado head to cut the cheeks on the sub tenons and sneak up to the right size so it all fits together correctly. Next thing you do is I've got to cut the, the styles to the correct length. I know some people will just cut the styles, leave the styles longer, and then put the rails and rails in to get and then to the right space place and then cut off the cut off the, uh, the uh, styles, but since I have, um, I know what the size it has to be in here, I'm all set with that, I can go and cut them off. If it needs a little bit of trimming, that's okay, we can do that. 
So let me cut, go, this will be on the chop saw because I don't have anything long enough to do really accurate cuts here. So I'm gonna put a stop on it for the chop saw to get them to the right length, which in this case will be 31 and 7 sixteenths. As I've done with other cuts on the chop saw here, I set a stop block up here. And this is the one I built that has the toggle clamp. I need to put points on it so it doesn't get sawdust. So I have to clean the sawdust up and it, and it gets caught in there. And that's, I did a test cut again. It's exactly 31 and 7 sixteenths from the edge of the blade to the stop block. So now let's cut out the, um, the uh, styles. Now I know I'm doing this to the right of the blade, which most people frown on, but that's okay. It works. I mean, I'm going to have my hand on the workpiece here and it's going to chop it down and get the part out. So let's do that. And there is all four of the styles. Put this over on the table. The next thing, of course, is to cut the stub tenons on the rails and make sure they fit correctly and everything's fine. So stub tenons, um, had an audio glitch, so I'm just gonna do the, I'm gonna wing it again. Uh, what I did was I set up the dado stack with, with just under a quarter inch stack. That will give me the height or the depth of the cut, which is right here, that, that right there. And then the sacrificial fence gives me the depth of the cut for the stub tenon to fit into the, um, the, the, uh, the style. Not quite there, but there we go. That's not, not flush, but that's what I'm talking about. That's a stub tenon, um, and it fits very nicely in there. It's snug, not so snug that it, it's hard to put together. Um, so essentially what I did is, I, this is the part you do off camera, is you sneak up onto the cuts with a, with a, with a sacrificial piece, which is somewhere around here, um, and you get it to where it fits perfectly, as you possibly can get it. Then you go and do all your cuts and trial fit. And I had to do a little cleanup to do the trial fits. But now I've got uh, four, style, four styles ready and four rails ready for uh, assembly. But I be, I'm going to do a dry assembly first, do all the measurements I need to do to make sure everything is the way it should be. And then we're going to cut, we're going to rip and cross cut the, pep, the boards that are around here somewhere for the raised panels and we'll cut the raised panels. And it's the same process I'm going to, I used on here on the table saw, but because I'm putting a bead detail on the inside of the rails and styles, a little one, uh, to get this kind of exposure here that you see here, you bring it over, to get this exposure I have here uh, for the panels, I've got to go, this is 15 degrees, I've got to go 13 degrees to get a little more exposure and then the, the beads will hide, hide the rest of it so it looks exactly like that. Um, really sorry I didn't get this, show you how I did this, but you get the idea. And there's a lot of people who do this on the web, on YouTube, making rails that look like this. So let's, uh, let's do a trial fit and see what we get. So here we go, trial fit. Um, this is just to make sure that everything kind of fits together. Oh, that one's too loose. There, that's better. There. There. Oh, there's one that's tight as well. I'm gonna have to shoulder plane these a little bit to get the right fit, and that's, that's kind of par for the course. Um, there, that, got, that one's fitting in there. And that one is not fitting in there. Let's try this one. That's it. Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna have to shoulder plane these, but here's what we have. This is one of the doors partially fit together. And this is where the fine tuning with the shoulder plane comes in handy, which I will be doing. And then, the, of course, the raised panel will fit right in here. So let me, uh, let me, let me get this uh, assembled and do the measurements so we can then move on to the raised panel. Measurements complete. 
Um, so what I did is I measured to make sure I get the width, the height of the panel correct and the width of the panel correct within a, 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 a really tight spacing. And then I add, I re, re, subtract some wood for expansion. I found that the, the, the rails were a little tall. They, they were too close to the top and the bottom of the opening for the, for the doors. So I shaved off an eighth of an inch of each of the, of the, uh, ra the excuse me, the styles, each of the styles so that it has enough room top and bottom and doesn't interfere. So I measured inside groove here to here and subtracted um, about an eighth of an inch there and then from, from side to side I measured, subtracted about three sixteenths of an inch because you know wood expands across the grain, not very much with the grain. The panels are over by the table saw. I'm going to cut out the blanks now and then we'll go ahead and uh, do the raised panel portion. Now these have to be back cut to fit in and to fit sit nice and you know almost flush with the front of the rails and styles. So I'm going to cut the bevel very much like I did on those and then I got to put the dado head back in and do the back cut. Um, it's just easier to do it with a dado than it is to do you know the double cut thing uh, with the table saw blade itself. So let me cut the blanks out and we'll move on from there. Panels are cut to the sizes that I want. Um, the blade is set to 13 degrees. Now, what I use for my blade is one of these little wixy blocks, uh, magnetic things, and you stand on the blade, zero it, and then go right to 13 degrees, 14, or whatever. It's more accurate, obviously, than the scale on the saw itself. Although, my scale, I dusted it, so it's pretty close, but, okay, being anal retentive about it. So I use that. Again, we're going to do the ends first. So. This is going to be, um, I'm not going to do all of it here on camera. I'm just going to do, do, do the end of one. And then you saw me do the, these here. So this one here and all that. So this is the same process. It's just bigger wood. So I do the ends first. Then um, remove the, uh, the jig. And then sneak up on the cut so I get a nice, perfect 45 degree corner here and then proceed from there. So let's go ahead and make a cut. So there's the first cut. I will now proceed to raise all the panels and then we'll come back and start doing some trial. Oh yeah, I have to back cut them and then we'll do some trial fitting. And there you go. There's one door. It's not complete. I have to do some more finicky fitting and then I'm going to glue this together um, and then I'll finish the other door. And then uh, in the next video, I'm, I'm going to stop. We're going to end the video now. This is, this is it's bumping up against 20 minutes again. So I'm going to um, finish the doors up and then I'll show you how I inlet the hinges in the next video. Um, and then I believe we're going to start on the crown molding, which involves some very interesting techniques on the table saw, which some of you already know about, of how to do crown molding on the table saw. Just a simple cove, crown molding. Uh, two inches, that's it. So, oops, I'm going to lose it here. So, um, until next time, it's going to fall over. Until next time, make great things out of wood and uh, do some raised panels. <laughs>